छोटी और बाहरी बातों को तथा पंथाई भाव को हटा कर विचारा जाए और संतों के मूल एवं सार विचारों को ग्रहण किया जाए तो यही सिद्ध होगा कि सब संतों का एक ही मत है Welcome to the Sant Mat Satsang podcast for January 2018. My name is James Bean. You just heard a sound bite of the definition of Sant Mat being recited in Hindi, accompanied by Tom Bora. The focus of the 2018 January edition of the Sant Mat Satsang podcast is a book called The Philosophy of Liberation, or Moksha Darshan, authored by Maharishi Mehi Parmhans. The English translation of the definition of Sant Mat to begin today's program. And this is from Philosophy of Liberation. One, stillness or steadiness is the essence of Shanti, or true deep spiritual peace. He who has attained Shanti is a Sant or a Saint. Three, Sant Mat encompasses the thoughts and teachings of the saints and sages. And four, it is natural for human beings to desire Shanti, peace. Inspired by this inherent desire, Seers of ancient times searched for the inner peace and found the path to attain this peace and expounded this way in the ancient teachings of the Upanishads. Similar views have been expressed by saints in more recent times such as Guru Nanak and Kabir Sahib. They expressed their teachings in the Punjabi and Hindi vernaculars respectively for the inspiration and edification of the common masses the teachings of these later saints are referred to as santmat however the upanishads are considered to be the foundation of santmat because they uniquely and abundantly describe the means for attaining shanti and contain a comprehensive explanation of the divine word or sound which leads to the highest wisdom the upanishads explain the yogic techniques and present a systematic path for transcending thought or mind in order to attain the absolute through the use of the yoga of sound the yoga of surat shabda sant mat follows the yogic path described in the upanishads and specifically employs surat shabda yoga in its practices Therefore it is to be understood that the teachings of the saints is a later expression or manifestation and development of the teachings within the Upanishads. When viewed on the surface the teachings of various saints sometimes seem to contradict one another or even to contradict the principles of the Upanishads but upon deeper analysis it becomes apparent that there is an unbreakable unity in the spiritual views of all saints. Saints have appeared in different times and in different places and their followers name their tradition in respect to the particular saint for example Kabir Panth and Dadu Panth The apparent differences can be attributed to variations in time place language and labels given to the views but in reality they are the same It also happens that excessively zealous followers tend to accentuate these seeming differences when sectarianism and the forms of particular time or place of the teachings of a saint are removed the basic principles of sant mat are one are in unity a reading from the philosophy of liberation the definition of sant mat and there are some footnotes here shanti is a sanskrit word with several english meanings peace tranquility bliss the peace which results from some degree of divine communion is shanti footnote number 2 the term sant 
is derived from the Sanskrit sat, meaning truth or reality. Thus, the one who knows the truth and who has experienced ultimate reality. Even though the word sant does not necessarily relate to the Western term saint, as it's often translated in English, in this book, for the sake of convenience, we use the words saint and sant interchangeably. A saint in the Sant Mat tradition is one who experiences the mystical state. It is a title conferred because of yogic achievements. This is different from the way this word is commonly understood in Western countries or traditions, where a saint is considered to be morally correct and is only canonized or recognized as a saint after death on the basis of some form of miracle that he or she had performed during their lifetimes. In the Sant Mat tradition, a saint is a living person who leads a moral life and has achieved realization of the divine. The Upanishads are ancient Vedic texts that define and categorize the philosophy of yoga. And footnote number five, Surat Shabd Yoga is the practice of transcending the mind in order to enter the level beyond mind. This is the level of ultimate unity. The vehicle for this inward journey is sound. Some footnotes accompanying this section called Definition of Santmat. Now, to some who have been exposed to Sant Mat or Radha Swami in Western countries may not be so aware of the Upanishads having anything to do with the path of the Masters. But all of these terms, Sant or Sat, Satsang, a formless supreme being, light, sound, a yoga of sound, a yoga of light, initiation. All of these ideas are not something from the Middle Ages, but go back much further in time. And it is the view of some that some of those rishis who contributed to the Upanishads were at the level of sants. Of course, there are many Upanishads written during B.C. times through A.D., a few centuries A.D., and points in between, and so it's a real wide variety of literature composed by many people over the centuries. So there's a lot going on there, different states of consciousness and yogas and whatnot. But in that mix, it is believed there are some, there were some at the level of sants. And so therefore, nothing new under the sun, all of these teachings about inner light and inner sound going back to a formless supreme being who is spirit and truth above mind above these lower realms that's all been taught before in ancient times one could say that the Upanishads are in relation to Hinduism and Hindu scriptures what the Gnostic Gospels are to Judaism and Christianity, a more out-in-the-open collection of mystical texts reflecting the teachings of various saints and mystics and the disciples that they had about the process of uh, the ascension of the soul back to the nameless, formless God once again. The Philosophy of Liberation by Maharishi Mehi Paramhans, translated into English by Professor Vina Howard. This uh, was the first book in English featuring the teachings of Maharishi Mehi in the lineage of Param Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras, the famous saint. This lineage began with Tulsi Sahib after Tulsi were several gurus, including Baba Devi Sahib of Muradabad. Mehi was the chief disciple and spiritual successor of Baba Devi Sahib of Muradabad. Veena Howard, who was initiated into meditation practice in Sant Mat by Mehi, said that more writings from this lineage of masters will gradually appear over time. 
and become available to spiritual seekers in the West. Indeed, I can say that a few books have also appeared since the publication of The Philosophy of Liberation. A book called Harmony of All Religions by Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj has been translated and published and is quite wonderful. Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj was one of the successors of Maharishi Mehi. That is a beautiful book, and I have it online at my Sant Mat e library in the Tulsi Sahib Maharishi Mehi section, as I do a copy of Philosophy of Liberation. There is a book called The Yoga of Light and Sound by Swami Akutanand, another successor of Maharishi Mehi, who had many successors, not just one. And there is a new book called The Inward Journey of the Soul by Swami Vyasanand, who is an initiate of Maharishi Mehi and also mentored by Swami Sant Seviji and a couple of other successors of Maharishi Mehi. That's available as a Kindle Amazon ebook, and I have a link to that at my at my library, my Sant Mat e library at Medium. Dot com. The philosophy of liberation provides some surprisingly technical details about meditation practice. Anyone interested in developing their own successful daily meditation practice will greatly benefit from the wisdom and depth of the philosophy of liberation. As it systematically covers all aspects of the philosophy of the path and the technical details of spiritual practice, rarely ever seen in print from any source outside of India. It is not light reading, and that is precisely what I like about it. It's quite literally the manual of Sant Mat, one of the best books I think ever published about Sant Mat mysticism, its goals and practices explaining them, the logic of them. There are several techniques described, the specific details of which, of course, are taught to students at the time of their diksha, or initiation, into meditation practice. But I can say the following. This is an outline of meditation practice according to this particular lineage related to Tulsi Sahib and Maharishi Mehi. 1. Developing a daily routine, the habit of meditating at the same time or times each and every day. 2. Proper posture, so that one is truly awake, focused at the third eye, and remains alert and awake during meditation. 3. Manas Jap, also known as Simran or Zikr, the mantra repetition of a sacred word done mentally or with the tongue of thought. 4. Manas Dhyan, the technique of mentally visualizing a form of God or one's spiritual master. 5. Dristi Sadhana, the technique of focusing upon an infinitesimal point in the darkness with eyes closed, leading to inner light meditation. This point of concentration at the third eye center gazing into the darkness will eventually blossom into inner light or visions of light. One gazes into the middle of the darkness or the light one sees while in meditation. Think of the infinitesimal point as being like a laser pointer or cursor keeping one focused. One passes from scene to scene and vision to vision, always looking toward the center. 6. Nada Sadhana, also known as Surit Shabd Yoga, or Inner Sound Meditation. The practice of inner spiritual hearing, transcendental hearing, to borrow a term from the Sringama Sutra of Buddhism. And 7. Reaching the state of Kivalya, or oneness with the Supreme Being, in the pure conscious realm. The ultimate goal is to merge into the upper level of Kivalya, known as Sabda Tita, or the state beyond the sound, 
the ultimate reality of God in the narguna or formless state, which also has been described with other terms such as anami or nameless, anadi or soundless, and anurag sagar or the ocean of love, which is my favorite actually, describing the supreme being or ultimate reality as the ocean of love. Other traditions describe this as the top part of Sach Khand, known as Anami Desh or Radhaswami Desh. And this is described as beyond the light, beyond the sound, beyond all forms. Below there may be forms, even manifestations of the Supreme Being as being with form or the soul having form, inhabiting realms of forms and blobs of light and visions of light and things going on in different uh, levels of consciousness. But beyond all of that is Anami, Radhaswami, Lord of the Soul, Anadi, soundlessness, beyond the sound, the upper part of Kavalya. That's the ultimate reality. The poet mystic Tulsi Sahib of Hathra said, there is a being who is inaccessible, or again, unfathomable, alak, and nameless, anami, and who has no locality, and is not confined to space. Excerpt on meditation practice from The Philosophy of Liberation. A comfortable pose of sitting or posture of keeping the head, neck, and trunk straight and steady is a must for meditation. Without the ability to sit in such a steady posture for prolonged periods, meditation cannot be practiced. Meditation should be practiced being alert without being drowsy, shutting the eyes comfortably, and without turning the eyeballs or pressing them in any way. The practice of meditation should be an essential part of the practitioner's daily routine. The preferred time of meditation is Brahma Muhurta, the hour of God, very early in the morning, like around 3 a.m., a couple hours before sunrise. The Sikhs of India, the Sikh religion, call this peak spiritual time of the morning Amrit Vela, or hour of elixir, in Punjabi. Or Gurmukhi. Likewise, one should meditate at mid morning and again in the evening time. While falling asleep, one should also engage his or her mind in Manas Jap or Simran or meditation. This is also fairly unique to the Tulsi Sahib branch of Sant Mat, the thrice daily approach to meditation. Morning may be the key time, but they really do recommend meditating three times per day, perhaps shorter, you know, smaller uh, periods of time devoted, but spread out throughout the day, morning, mid-morning, and again in the evening, but not too late, not too late in the evening when it becomes close to grogginess. And then a kind of fourth meditation, if you will, would be just doing some spiritual exercise while falling asleep, like repeating your Simran sacred name or visualizing the form of the Master. And that reminds me that I want to return and make a couple of comments about the definition of Sant Mat section I read from earlier. One, stillness or steadiness is the essence of Shanti, peace. Uh, in the Upanishads, all the time, we hear Om Shanti, 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 or peace, peace, peace in the divine sound. Two, from the definition of Santmat, he who has attained Shanti is a Sant, the true embodiment, the real manifest embodiment of Shanti, peace, is a Sant. So it's a matter of attainment. It's not a matter of putting on a turban or a robe or inheriting a family business or 
assuming a title, printing up some business cards or hanging a poster or putting up a website. It is a state of being. It is a state of attainment of an individual. They are the embodiment of peace. It's not a matter of calling oneself that. It is a matter of actually, genuinely being that. Three, Sant Mat encompasses the thoughts and teachings of the saints and sages. Some have called this, of course, Path of the Masters or the Way of the Saints. That's another great way of describing it. The Path of the Saints, the Path of the Masters. It is natural for human beings to desire Shanti. I love that. It is natural for human beings to desire peace. We seek it. And so we find with the Path of the Masters a systematic approach. How do we reach that point? There are spiritual techniques. These, of course, are learned at the time of one's initiation or diksha techniques of ascending. And there is a kind of ascension ladder, if you will. I mean, even uh, starting uh, with uh, attending a satsang or reading a book, that's a level of satsang uh, as well, reading scriptures or the teachings of a saint. Singing hymns, prayer, all of those things are very positive contributions. Of course, uh, receiving initiation from a living teacher doing Simran, that's another level, visualizing the form of the master, contemplating the inner light, hearing the inner sound, and entering into oneness, getting to that sat lok level of oneness beyond body, beyond astral, beyond causal, beyond mental and etheric levels, just becoming soul, I am that, I am that, I am that and entering into the true name and true being, true state, beyond. That is absolutely vital. There is a section of the Padavali of Maharishi Mehi Parmhans another great text which I just put online for free at the archive.org site, the Internet Archive, and linked it at my Santmat Radhaswami e-library, the Padavali of Maharishi Mehi Parmhans, which has something very similar to the definition of Santmat a series of points, you know, point one, point number two, key teaching number three. Here are the seven principles of Santmat by Maharishi Mehi Parmhans. And this is included in the book Harmony of All Religions. It's also recited at Satsangs in India on a regular basis. And it comes from the Padavali, a collection of mystic poetry or hymns of Maharishi Mehi. Seven principles of Santmat. One, ultimate reality is beyond any beginning or end. Infinite, beyond birth. Beyond the senses, all pervading. Yet even beyond pervasiveness, it must therefore be understood as the supreme being. This essential element is known in Santmat, the teachings of the saints, as the Lord of all and is the foundation of all things. This being is beyond both inanimate and animate objects of nature. It is without qualities and beyond qualities. Its nature is infinite, imperishable, all-powerful. It is beyond time and space, beyond sound and beyond form. It is the one without a second. The Supreme Being is beyond the scope of the mind, the intellect, and the senses. This entire universe is powered by the energy of this being. This being is not human. It is not manifested in physical form. 
It has existence beyond the illusion of maya. And there is nothing that exists outside of it. It is the being which is eternal and is in existence from the beginning. Sant Mat considers this being to, the, to be the divine reality. And this knowing or merging with this being is the goal of all spirituality. Principle number one. Now the sentence that this being is not uh, human, you know, uh, that is not uh, anything against the idea of living masters, not at all. It's just saying that the reality of the supreme being at this true level of ultimate reality is, is something that cannot be confined. You know, the physical realm is just too small to fit God. Even as it said that uh, most religions are too small to contain the real God. Principle number two. The individual soul is an inseparable part of the Supreme Being. That's very beautiful. Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram in his Prempatra Radha Swami series has some very beautiful uh, ways of describing this same thing. The, the jiva or soul is a particle, is a wave, is a ray or emanation of the Supreme Being or Lord of the Soul. You'll find a lot of teachings about this, a lot of uh, paragraphs and bhajans in the Prempatra Radhaswami and Prembani hymns of Hazur Maharaj Raisaligram of the Radhaswami faith and of course Baba Devi Sahib of Muradabad was very close friends with Hazur Maharaj of the Radhaswami faith. They both followed different versions of Santmat one being Agra Radhaswami, Radhaswami Nam. But Hazur Maharaj was very uh, knowledgeable about Tulsi Sahib of Hathras through his guru, Swamiji Maharaj, and was very respectful of the Tulsi Sahib way of Santmat that had been around uh, in earlier times and was still contemporary with him. And uh, so, different mantras, different Simran words, but the same path. The individual soul is an inseparable part of the Supreme Being. Number three, third principle of Sant Mat. The physical world of nature was created. It has an origin and an end. For the individual soul or jiva bound by illusion or maya remains in the cycle of death and birth. This is the cause of one's suffering. In order to escape from this cycle of death and birth, we must experience realization of this Supreme Being. 5. By practicing devotion through these four techniques, manas japa or simran, the recitation of a divine name or names, manas dhyan, dhyan, focus on a divine form, drishti sadhana or the yoga of inner light, the yoga of inner seeing, inner light meditation, and nada sadhana or the yoga of surat shabda, the yoga of inner sound, concentration on the inner divine sounds. Through these practices, the practitioner consecutively transcends the realms of darkness, light, and sound, which cloak or veil the supreme truth, the, the divine reality, the supreme being who is veiled by light and sound and forms. Only in a human body, an individual soul is able to achieve unity with the divine. In other forms of existence, animal, etc., it is not possible to tread the spiritual path. Now, just interjecting here, I suppose if we find sentient, intelligent beings in some other solar system, 
Proxima Centauri, for instance, we may expand that definition of sentient human being just a bit. Uh, anyone who's consciously able to uh, choose <laughs> to sit themselves down and do this meditation practice, you know, a broader definition of sentient, intelligent life, human being, you know, maybe we'll have to deal with that someday. Six, the sixth principle of Sant Mat. Lying, stealing, intake of intoxicating substances, adultery and violence, including harming other beings, are all the five sins to be avoided. Eating meat or fish is also considered to be a form or diet of violence and should be avoided. The aspirants of Sant Mat must abstain from these vices. In Buddhism and other Eastern religions, Jainism, Taoism, and Hinduism, Sikhism actually too, these five abstinences are known as the five precepts, sort of commandment related, you know, parallels to some of the Ten Commandments, if you will, about uh, lying and stealing and various forms of violence and how these disturb the peace and should be avoided. And the seventh principle, the following are considered to be the requirements for the attainment of liberation. A. Trust and belief in God. B. Commitment to seek the divine within. C. Devotion and service to a Satguru, spiritual master, living master D. Satsang listening to the teachings and spiritual discourse including the study of the saints and scriptures and E. Diligent meditation practice those are considered requirements for the attainment of Jiva Mukti or liberation of the soul trust and belief in God, Supreme Being commitment to seek the divine through buildings through temples through rituals through you know reading cute quotes on the internet mm, no within the human body is the temple of the divine and the third eye center is the portal that takes one inside in this world, into this world of within our inner space. That's where it begins. Nothing significant happens until one reaches the third eye center. Then something has occurred. Anything prior to that is just talk, speculation, theory before practice, faith before gnosis or knowledge only when you get to the third eye center. Within, uh, see devotion and service to a Satguru, a spiritual master. Uh, a living teacher is required. We all have the same issues of cultural programming, ba baggage, uh, heredity and environment, and uh, the same sorts of struggles. And so to find a, a genuine spiritual master can really speed things up and so we, we're not just mucking around uh, but get someplace as fast as we possibly can because life is short satsang listening paying attention to the teachings and spiritual discourses including the teachings of saints and scriptures i'm fairly eclectic myself i i i, I have you know valued uh, comparative religion, which is actually a theme of the book Harmony of All Religions, to see universal teachings in Buddha, who's considered a saint, Lord Mahavira of Jainism, who's considered a saint, uh, Jesus of that original uh, Jewish Christianity, considered a saint and a vegetarian, by the way. Uh, there's a lot of universal teachings there. So one can be respectful of world religions, the founders of those world religions, and be working with the same 
universal truths. Uh, but people who study Sant Mat tend to say something like that and tend to recognize those spiritual truths and find references to sound in, uh, you know, Hildegard of Bingen's hymns and Marjorie Kemp or the Nag Hammadi Library. It's Sant Mat people who have come to understand those universal mystical truths and practice them themselves that tend to see those things quoted in various sources. It tends to be Sant Mat books on Christianity that talk about the sound. And I don't know who else on this planet is doing that. Nobody that I've encountered. So the path is universal, but only if you're following it, experiencing it for yourself, can you notice it elsewhere in mystical Judaism or Kabbalah or Gnostic Gospels and so on. Uh, once you yourself are an initiate of the mysteries, then you recognize that same universal truth when it manifests here and there, or at least in, in the past, here or there, in uh, various world religions and traditions. We respect in Sant Mat all the great founders of the past and continue to honor living teachers, recent masters and living teachers, right up to the living present. Thanks for joining me today on the Sant Mat Satsang podcast for January 2018, introducing you to the philosophy of liberation by Maharishi Mehi Paramhans, the definition of Sant Mat, the principles of Sant Mat, and a bit of a glimpse into the logic of the meditation practice. Very soon will be another podcast, either under the Sant Mat Satsang podcast label or Spiritual Awakening Radio at YouTube, one of those two, uh, that will explore the Padavali of Maharishi Mehi Paramhans, the mystic poetry and hymns of Maharishi Mehi, and will include some hymns sung in Hindi, as well as English language translation. All of the great saints have been poets or musicians, and sometimes both, Throughout the ages, Rumi, poetry, Kabir, poetry and music, Maharishi Mehi, mystic poetry and music. Swami Sant Seviji uh, had some couplets as well. Uh, all of these saints, none of them are CEOs of spiritual companies. They're all today like they were, you know, hundreds of years ago. Composers of hymns or poems, uh, that creativity is very central uh, to give some justice to communicating about this path, this exalted path of the masters. Sometimes the right-brained, musical, poetic way is the only way to really do justice to a path like this. And that was true during the days of Kabir. It was true during the days of Tulsi Sahib of Swamiji Maharaj and Huzur Maharaj. Maharishi Mehi Paramhans had his uh, collection of uh, mystic poetry, and that tradition lives on. Uh, saints are composers of hymns, poetry, and other spiritual discourses, of course, but including mystic poetry. Thanks for joining me today for the Sant Mat Satsang podcast. If you'd like to receive a link to my Sant Mat e-library online, which has different sections, a Kabir section, an Adi Grant Sikh section, a classic Sants section, you know, with uh, Nam Dev and Mirabai and some of the Ravi Das, all of those wonderful great saints and poet mystics of the, the ages. Uh, there's a Kripal Singh section, actually. In there, there's a huge Radhaswami uh, section, there is a Tulsi Sahib Maharishi Mehi section of writings. I have a Gnostic mysticism section. That's something I specialize in. So I have that there. There is a vegan and vegetarian section, and there is also a Sufi poetry. The, the Sants have always greatly valued uh, the Sufis, 
Sufi poets like Kabir, Hafez, Samad, Baba Farid, and have seen them as sans also. Um, vegetarians, and who also taught Surat Shab Yoga, Yoga of Sound. And there are a number of uh, poems of, of Rumi dedicated to divine sound. So that's uh, been a thing for many centuries, and uh, the saints of India have always enjoyed reading Sufi poetry. And uh, so I have a, a, a Rumi Sufi section at my Sant Mat e-library as well. Send me an email. I can send you a link to the Sant Mat e-library. Also, if you have any other questions or comments, I have a, a link I can send you to the Philosophy of Liberation. The Padavali of Maharishi Mehi just got uploaded to the Internet Archive just a few days ago. Uh, Harmony of All Religions. Any of these books, if you're interested in reading them, they're all online. Uh, for free, freely available to uh, anyone. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com james at spiritualawakeningradio.com You can send a text message. Include your email address with this text message um, in order to get links and have enough room to send you things. Uh, 508-603-9388 508-603-9381 I have a website spiritualawakeningradio.com and this website is sort of a uh, what's the term? site map you know, there, there are links from the website at the website to uh, various uh, categories of things blogs Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr I have a donate button uh, on the website because a certain amount of support uh, keeps this going, this most unusual program and online project uh, going, and you know, to share books, to do these things. Uh, there are links to blogs, YouTube, uh, a number of different things at the website, spiritualawakeningradio.com. Feel free to visit the website. There's some articles there. And lots more. Thanks for joining me today for the Sant Mat Satsang podcast. Namaste, Radhaswami, Jai Guru, Satya Ram, that's actually a Dadu Panth term, Jai Satnam, and blessings to all.
प्राचीन काल में ऋषियों ने इसी प्रेरण से प्रेरित होकर इसकी पूरी खोज की और इसकी प्राप्ति के विचारों को उपनिषदों में वर्णन किया इन्हीं विचारों से मिलते हुए विचारों को कबीर साहब और गुरु नानक साहब आदि संतों ने भी भारतीय और पंजाबी आदि भाषाओं में सर्वसाधारण के उपकरार्थ वर्णन किया इन विचारों को ही संत मत कहते हैं परंतु संत मत की मूल भित्ति तो उपनिषद के वाक्यों को ही मानने पड़ते हैं क्योंकि जिस ऊंचे ज्ञान का तथा उस ज्ञान के पद तक पहुंचाने के जिस विशेष साधन नादानुसंधान अर्थात सुरत शब्द योग का गौरव संत मत को है वे तो अति प्राचीन काल की इसी भित्ति पर अंकित होकर जगमगा रहे हैं भिन्न भिन्न काल तथा देशों में संतों के प्रकट होने के कारण तथा इनके भिन्न भिन्न नामों पर इनके अनुयायियों द्वारा संत मत के भिन्न भिन्न नामकरण होने के कारण संतों के मत में पृथकत्व ज्ञात होता है परंतु यदि मोटी और बाहरी बातों को तथा पंथाई भाव को हटाकर विचारा जाए और संतों के मूल एवं सार विचारों को ग्रहण किया जाए तो यही सिद्ध होगा कि सब संतों का एक ही मत है